Okay, in this video we're going to move on to caricature. We're going to start with a young Harry Potter. He's got a very youthful face, very round, so there's big glasses and big hair. So let's uh, pick a few things out to exaggerate. And to begin with, we're just going to start out a rough construction drawing with our coloured pencils. So I'm going to rough in a round circle for the shape of his head. And I'm just going to add on some additional volume for the hair. Okay, I'm going to bring it in slightly at the eye here. And then bring that jaw down to the round bone of the chin. I want to keep that jaw nice and soft, you know, I think... Harry's meant to be about 11 or 12 in this image, so I'm just going to keep that jawline nice and soft. Get a centre line in there, and we're going to rough in the basic shape of the ear and the neck. Now, even though the ear is slightly obscured with hair, it's important to get it in there, and then we'll know exactly what we need to cover up. Okay, so I'm going to put another line for the eyebrows, another line for the nose. Okay, so these are just lines just to map. Uh, the features to the face, they're just rough guidelines. Okay, so I'm going to bring those uh, eye sockets out here, just the rough shapes for those. And let's get the round shapes of the glass lenses in here and here. Uh, this one on this side is going to be obscured slightly by the nose. So we're thinking about how that overlap is going to form. I'm just going to move the nose back slightly, it seems like it's poking out a little too far there. That's better. Okay, and I'm going to put in the uh, filtrum there, coming down from the bottom of the nose, and the eyeball shape. It's important to get the eyeballs in. We'll map the eyelids over those later. Okay, so you have to think about the shapes that are underneath the surface of the skin as much as you do what is visible. Okay, so I'm going to pop some lips in here. So the top lip can be broken down into three basic shapes. You've got the middle section and the two sections coming out either side of it. And the bottom lip is a bit fuller. I'm just giving a little bit of definition to the corners of the mouth there. Okay. And now with the eyebrows, I'm going to block those shapes in. And the eyebrows tend to be made up of two basic sections. You've got the thicker part and then the, I like to call the, the handlebar, the, the thinner part that tapers down towards the temple. Okay, let's block some basic shapes in for that fringe. I like to segment the hair. It's a nice way of kind of making it look a little bit cartoony and building that volume up using basic shapes instead of individual strokes for each hair. Okay. So let's uh, attach those glasses to the handle that will go back behind his ear. A few more strands of hair coming down over the left side of Harry's face. Uh, I'm going to start drawing the eyelids in over the top of the eye. So it's important to get that whole eyeball in. And then we can map the eyelids and the skin and the flesh around the eye over the top of the eyeball. And that gives it volume. I'm sketching the whole of the, the iris in here. And it's important to do a perfect circle though. So even though I'm just drawing through shapes and over the top of shapes because all of this construction and drawing will fade underneath. So it's more important to get the, the shapes accurate at this point rather than uh, worrying around about cutting through other shapes. I'm switching to my HB pencil now and I'm just going to start refining and putting some more texture in there. So as I'm going over these individual strands of hair, I'm just building a little bit of texture into it, a little bit of hatching, a little bit of direction to these lines. I'm really kind of building up the volume of the hair, I'm showing strands overlapping each other, crisscrossing each other. Okay, so I'm going to put a few single strands at the front of the eyebrow. There's usually a few loose hairs there, especially on male figures. And then you've got the main body of the eyebrow and then this little tail that tapers down away from it. Okay. 
let's do one on this side as well, a few strands, the larger volume, we're not going to see the eyebrow tapering down onto the side, let's get the curve of the nose in here, and of course the part of the glasses that sits on the nose, now with the nose, you know, Harry's quite a young character, I really want his nose to be quite button-like, I want to really emphasise that little cute nose, okay, and filling in the nostril there, and also we want the nostril to come and flare around. I'm just putting a little highlight in there and some hatching just to show the direction of the plane of that part of the nose and down here as well. And that's optional, but it's a nice little stylistic choice that I like to make. So I've just given a little bit of emphasis to that Cupid's bow there, and I'm just going to rough in the basic shape of the glasses now. Let's bring them in on this side as well. No, I'm not too happy with that one, so I'm just going to grab my rubber and just rub out the bottom of that lens. Let's put that back in. Okay, so even when you've got the construction drawing to work with, you know sometimes you can go a little bit astray with a line, so it always helps to keep a rubber handy. There we go, that's much better. Okay, now because we've thought about the shape of these lips and segmented them and thought about the basic shapes that you can use to build them up, as I come in and refine the inside, the opening of the mouth here, it's gonna, the contour of this line is going to follow those basic shapes. Okay, I'm going to put in a little bit of definition for the corners of the mouth. And then as I bring that lip up to the cupid's bow there, and this one down to the other corner of the mouth, there's going to be some perspective affecting those. And let's get the bottom lip in there, which is nice and round and plump, full of blood. Okay, so part of the reason why I put this round ball for the bone of the chin in during the initial construction stage is you've got a little bit of skin that comes up from that jutting bone towards your bottom lip. And just by putting a little bit of definition in here underneath that bottom lip, you can put some shading in there. And uh, the skin tends to crease around underneath that lip. So I'm going to go back in now and start putting in some eyelash information above the eye. And generally speaking, on male characters, uh, the eyelashes, you know, generally I don't pop, pop them in unless the character's quite young or effeminate. Uh, it works quite well for female characters and just building up that eyelash information on top. But for male um, characters, Generally, Harry's young enough that we can get away with putting a few in. Okay. So now, because we've thought through that basic shape of the eyeball and how the skin folds around it, what we've got is two nice, even-sized eyes. I'm going to pop these uh, irises in. Those end edges should marry up if you were to continue them. So it gives us a nice round iris to work from. Let's put a few eyelashes in there on the top and over on this side as well making sure that socket of the eye curves in before that cheek comes down nice and round quite a shallow draw I'm putting some hatching in here, some directional hatching, just to show that those round cheeks really are curving up towards the corners of the mouth. And as we bring the jawline down on this side of the face as well, just going to build that up. And when we pop the chin in here, just going to make sure that the little bone of chin there just juts out just enough to show the distinction between the bony part of the jaw and the fleshy part of the jaw. Okay, a little bit of shadow information underneath the ear. And let's pop the bottom of the ear in there. Again, we don't need too much detail in here because a lot of it is obscured, of course, by the hair. Now I'm using some really nice fluid 
marks just to build up the texture of the hair as it falls down over the ear. Let's bring that collar in. Nice continuous flowing lines. I don't want to see anyone feathering those lines in. Every stroke should be made with purpose. And let's also bring some hatching down underneath the jaw. Shadow falling down on the neck there. And I'll put a little dimple on the chin as well. Buzz like ear style. Okay, so one thing that's important whenever you're drawing faces and eyes is just get those little specular highlights in there. And as I pop the pupil in here, I'm also thinking about how that top eyelid is casting a shadow over the eye. So not only am I shading the pupil in, but I'm also casting a little bit of shadow over the top of the iris there as well. And I'm just going to bring that nostril down and around, should part of that visible. On the outside of the nose, which is starting to really look cute as a button. Okay, I'm just repeating the same process on the left eye now, casting a shadow from the eyelid. A bit more definition underneath that bottom lip there. And let's bring the rest of this, these strands of hair down in the fringe. And I really want to emphasize this big kind of helmet-like hair. It's really, really large. It's got a lot of volume on top of his little head. I'm going to get rid of this line here. It's creating a weird tangent where it looks like the forehead is continuing up rather than being obscured by the hair. So you want to avoid tangents where you know, one line for one part of something is marrying up to another line of something else. It always creates visual tension. I'm going to shade these eyebrows in. Again, shading in the direction that the form is flowing in. And let's get a little bit of shading and definition on this hair. I don't want to shade everything in. I want to leave some information out. This is a process of omission. It gives us that nice kind of cartoony looking hair where some of the hair is going to have light hitting it and other hair other parts of the hair isn't so i'm just going through section by section and choosing parts to shade and parts to leave out Put some hatching in here, and shading, and just building up texture. Always keeping my wrist nice and fluid. I'm trying not to overthink where I'm placing these shadows. Again, shading in the direction that the hair is falling down over the forehead. Okay, so that uh, hair looks a little bit uneven over on this right side of the face, so just add a little extra on there, just to even that out slightly. The hair is quite bouffant, but that looks a little better. 
and of course we need to get this iconic lightning bolt scar in there on the forehead. Okay, so I'm just going to shade in the frames of his glasses as well now. These nice thick rims. One of the key things when you're trying to do caricatures of youthful characters, you don't want to put too many straight lines on their face. It will this will age them uh, a great deal. So if you're drawing older characters, it's absolutely fine. But generally speaking, if I'm drawing younger caricatures or uh, female caricatures, I try not to put too many lines on their face because this does tend to age them quite a lot. It's fine if you're drawing someone like Clint Eastwood who has quite a craggy face, but uh, for Harry Potter, you know, him being uh, 11 or 12, I really want to keep that face relatively nice and clear of any stray lines or marks. You know, really lend it a nice, youthful look. So, there we have it. That is my approach to caricaturing younger characters. Uh, so, students will really enjoy this if they want to do caricatures of uh, the kids or grandkids. Uh, this is a fantastic approach for that. Hope you enjoyed it.